all these metals need to rise at least another 5 to 8 percent in the next few weeks if we're going to see the global commodity indexes really rebound from five years of torpor. I'm here at PDAC with Tom Calandra. Tom, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you. It's always great to be here with Small Cap Power. For viewers who might not be familiar with you, can you give us a brief update to what you've been up to lately? Uh, yeah, uh, my latest projects that I've visited have been in uh, Cambodia, Nevada, Mexico, and Canada. Um, you know, and as far as my writing, it's always available, uh, the Calandra Report and at TomCalandra.com. I've been focusing more on uh, uh, platinum lately, but uh, I'm very enthusiastic about gold. Well, let's start with gold. What are you seeing these days that are making you so enthusiastic? Well, you know, we've had all the commodity indexes around the world rise in the past few weeks, especially in the past two weeks, and that doesn't just include gold. Oil's made a rebound. Uh, the dollar has come off its highs. Gold has been down almost five years, uh, and uh, with that, the metals equities. So, you know, we have the seeds of what looked like a rally, not just in gold, but in platinum, nickel. Almost everything has moved. Practically the only thing that hasn't had a big boost in terms of the physical is uranium. I'm extremely hopeful, and I want to see the gold rally continue because it's my top metal. But you, you're talking about platinum as well. That's something we haven't covered quite so much in detail. Give us, give our yeah. viewers a little bit insight into that. Sure. It's about 10 times as rare as gold, but the price, which was maybe, went just as high as gold, $1,800, $2,000, is now trading below $1,000. It's made a $30 or $40 comeback recently. So how can a metal that's 10 times as rare as gold and still used in a lot of industrial functions and is also a precious metal sought out by the Chinese and others, how, how could it still be trading under a thousand dollars? We're at that stage now where platinum's ready to come back. We're going to see uh, a new online producer, Platinum Group Metals. Uh, they're actually producing already and they've sent their, uh, their material to smelter. Tom, what are some of your insights into the paper trade as it relates to gold? Well, you know, come on, most of the world cares about the paper, not the physical, because paper is where the stories are. Stock markets are, are markets of stories. And the paper that represents these companies are stories. The paper, especially uh, since the beginning of 2016, has kind of gone berserk. It's up 100%, some of them, some of the smaller ones. But mostly the mid-caps, the, the very well-traded mid-caps like you know, McEwen Mining, Alamos Gold, uh, Seabridge, uh, the very hot, uh, liquid companies, they're up 35 to 50 percent in a few weeks. I mean, let's face it, a, a $1,250 gold price probably doesn't improve their prospects all that much, if they're producers anyway. All these metals need to rise at least another 5 to 8 percent in the next few weeks if we're going to see the global commodity indexes really rebound from five years of torpor. Well, Tom, what can our viewers expect to, uh, to see at the Calandra Report this year? Uh, well, you know, I follow about 30, 35 companies. I own most of them. There, there are very few I don't own. Right now I'm looking for, uh, you know, some of the names that have been entirely ignored and uh, in platinum, in gold, in silver, in uranium, a few others, probably copper. There are at least 10 right off the top of my head that are so cheap that the only risk is that this rally is not real. And since they've been largely ignored anyway up to now, yet you're starting to see more volume and more partnerships with these companies, um, you're pretty safe. Riverside Resources, they're a prospect generator. They hold four or five royalties on, on projects in Mexico, but they also have a, a project in Arizona. I like Golden Valley Mines. That's a, a good, solid Abitibi gold belt company with dozens of royalties. Of course, I own all of these. And, uh, and then I guess if you're going to look at companies that actually have these huge portfolios of royalties, yet have been largely ignored by the current rally in gold, I would say Eurasian Minerals, uh, uh, based in Denver. They have properties and projects that they're selling in, God knows, 70 jurisdictions. Once again, I own that one. Tom, thanks again for joining us today. Angela, always a pleasure. Thank you. 
Reporting live from PDAC, I'm Angela Harmantis for Small Cap Power.